Hey everyone, so uh, my YouTube blew up like three days ago and everyone's asking about like instructions on how to use Hypernet. A lot of people worried that it's not working. Uh, we tested it now and the good news is Hypernet is working. We've just got it working with Counter-Strike 1.6 and I'm going to share um, instructions uh, with all of you and some example files on um, how to get it working with Counter-Strike 1.6. So we've just downloaded the, you know, like the uh, competition version from, um, what, uh, what was that website called? That something dot IT. It was like, um, cy cyber, cyber sports. Cyber sports dot IT. Yeah. So, um, Hello. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up everyone? This is Hi uh, Wavefinder. He's going to be helping us with the, um, with the software testing here. So, um, I started up my options.json uh, for Hypernet. I, I opened it up and um, I modified it so that it reflects uh, the two UDP ports that are required by Counter-Strike and also the one TCP port. So I've got 27005, 27015 and uh, 27015 TCP specified here. And this is just a clone of the default options.json that is uh, in, in the folder when you download the application. Then I started the application, Hypernet, as I'm going to be the server in this scenario. And you see it says, share this public key. So I'm going to double click on that public key, press enter, and then start. Then I create a settings file that is, if you look at the readme uh, in the project, there's an example of a, let's have a look at the readme real quick. There's an example in here. Is the different text that everybody okay? So there's um, you see, there's a server config and a client config. So I use the server config for my side, and then oh, the, this client config is wrong. Let's have a look at the readme on the GitHub. So the uh, project is at github.com slash an entry point slash hyper dash nat dash nat and if you look at the readme here uh, uh, there's a example public key this is the example that we'll be using for the for the client config so you see it says here mode client protocol it specifies so you got to say udp or tcp for it Specify the port and server port. They can they can be the same if you want it to be the same as uh, what it is on the other side. And you've got to specify the public key. So I copied uh, this example and I pasted it into my config file that I'm going to distribute to my friends. And so uh, it started off like that example one and then I put my public key that it was giving me in the command line over here. So this public key, I I copied it, pasted it in there, and then I set it set it up so that it has three ports. One is the 27005, the same one that was specified in my server config, and then the, two, the UDP 27015 and TCP 27015 ports. So I'm going to share these config files, and if you want to play Counter-Strike 1.6, you can load uh, the ones up that I've shared, put your own public key in there, and it will just work. You can distribute that to your friends, they can put their uh, options.json um, in their um, hypernet uh, directory, or you can zip your own one up to just give to them. And when they double click it, they'll connect to you. So Wayfinder, uh, I believe you're sharing your screen. I'm going to quickly open up your screen. Hopefully I can display it. Okay, so you've got your options.net, and that is the same options that I've specified on my side. So yep, so that's my configuration there. Yep. So if you double click on your hypernet um, now, so this is the options.json that I've distributed to him after I've added my um, my public key to it. And if he double clicks on this program now, it's going to attempt to connect to my computer using that public key to discover it. So it doesn't need to know my IP address. And uh, Yeah, so it's currently starting. So it takes a few minutes because it's using this peer-to-peer -peer network called Hyperswarm to negotiate this connection. And they've really gotten it down to a very quick speed. You see one is already connected. The other one is connecting now. So it's discovering my computer over this um, over this peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer swarm and then um, 
uh, once it knows what my IP address is, it negotiates um, through something called uh, back punching or reverse hole punching or heuristic hole punching. Um, they uh, negotiate a UDP connection and all these connections are made using UDP or something actually called UTP, which is TCP over UDP. And um, we, we do use raw UDP for the UDP connections to improve connectivity, but it still uses um, uh, this, uh, the same underlying functionality. So um, for the raw UDP, it's essentially uh, just the same connection without the UTP abilities added. So, um, <coughs> so, so right now he's connected to my computer and I'm gonna disconnect from his screen so that we can get better bandwidth. And now I'm gonna try and ask him to connect to my Half-Life dedicated server in a second. Let me just start mine up. It might be worth me still sharing just to show the procedure to connect within the game. <laughs> That's not a problem. That's not a problem. So I'm actually <coughs> gonna do the same thing on my side as well. Okay. Um, so here I've got my dedicated server started up. I did um, disable secure. I don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, so you see there's like anti-cheat. Um, well, let's try it with it on. I'm going to keep it on this time and we'll see if it connects. Um, so I've got it open now. And if I double click on my Counter-Strike, I'm just going to open the console and say connect. 127.0.0. And uh, I'm going to ask Wavefinder to do the same thing on his side. Wavefinder, can you connect to localhost 127.0.0.1 on your side? Yep, just doing that now. So my server, my dedicated server that's running localhost on my machine is also going to appear as if it's running on localhost on his machine. And there he is. He's a spectator in the game. Yep. Already. So uh, that's basically how it works. We're, we're connected now. Let's, let's, uh, oh, there you are. Let's, yeah, there we go. Hello. Now, um, currently, I'm connected to a Wavefinder. He's in England. And if we forwarded ports and went through a million different hoops to make this work, uh, that 250 uh, ping would be exactly the same as the back punching ping. The performance is identical. We've tested it on both sides. And it's really, really playable, as you can see, like, it's pretty good, yeah. 1.6 does never, ever get better at that distance. In fact, I would almost say that if you're on a mobile connection, this is the lowest possible latency you can get. If you use tools like Amachi or something like that, um, they would resort to uh, forwarding your connections through a third-party server, and that bouncing would destroy your latency, and you wouldn't be able to play a, a good game. You might be able to watch a video or something, but never games. So... That's why this is kind of like a Hamachi killer. And I'll be honest with you guys, if there's a lot of interest in this, I would be interested in making the tool a bit better. I did notice if you have like really um, fancy games that make lots and lots and lots of connections, sometimes there's a bit of a hassle to try and get everything to connect. But uh, for LAN games, like the older LAN games like this, that, that don't have a ton of ports that they need to connect and test, um, it does appear to work perfectly fine. And you can also do this with lots of friends. If you give, so if you've s uh, prepared that options.json with your public key, if you just give that to all of your friends, then they all double click that file and they'll all connect to your game. So that's basically what we've got going down with this tool. If there's a uh, uh, interest in this, I, as I explained, I could make it better. There's maybe some improvements I can make, but right now it gives you that like LAN capability even if you're on mobile, even if you're on CIDR, all of these like difficult to make connections because of heuristic back punching. You can make a direct connection with your friends and enjoy these old LAN activities. Um, if you want to share files, it gets a bit more complicated. I've used tools like SyncThing. I've gotten torrents to work, actual torrents, um, if you do a bit of manual configuration. But um, what I've noticed is that the Windows file sharing, because it's always running a local server, uh, on the same port, it, it clashes. Like if you have the same server port and the same local port, the way that we've got it set up now, then there's some clashing. But apart from that, uh, um, apart just from Windows file sharing, like most of the LAN programs I've tested, personally tested, have worked, as long as they use TCP or UDP. What's up, Wayfinder? 
Uh, I was just going to say this should probably work for games like Rainbow Six, Vegas, that kind of thing, like the older games. And also, um, I had a question about the tick rate on the servers, like whether that would matter for the latency and stuff as well. Um, look, this is this gives you a base case scenario. This uh, yeah. lets your mobile phone. I'm on a mobile SIM card right now, and it's acting. As if I oh, it's great then. As if I yeah. have direct forwarded ports. The latency is unaffected by the technique that I've used. And um, so that's all these people that have mobile SIM cards out there. You can actually start a game server and play with your friends. And this is kind of, unless you use tail scale, or so there's a few things that can do something like this. But like uh, generally, this is quite an esoteric way to connect to somebody. And with these games, this is almost the only way to do it properly. Um, in fact, I would say like this is probably the lowest overhead mechanism to do it with. It's a bit of a hack, but it <coughs> works. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how this tool is used. I hope this helps everybody who's uh, been getting stuck and giving me comments over YouTube. The one thing we've realized now is that if you look at the zip file, when you download the zip file, the readme that's inside there is wrong. And if you go to the GitHub page, it has the correct readme. Now, I'll try and make a new release of this um, in the next few days and just correct that readme file that's in there. But if you look at the, um, the hypernet GitHub page from whence you download this uh, zip file, there is a readme file in there that the top uh, uh, code that's provided is the example for a server and the bottom code is an example for a client. And you see that for every port, you have to specify the public key of the server. So you can actually make clients. Like you set up your client, you can make it uh, take one port, connect to one of your friends, and take another port and connect that to a different one of your friends. Each one of them can be assigned a public key. So it's quite cool that you can uh, you can make this like sort of like a little LAN network by natting. Um, let me know what you all think. If you've got any suggestions for how this program can be improved, um, yeah, just drop a comment. Maybe uh, if, if there's some time and we want to do a dead cycle on it, we can make some improvements to it. It already works. Um, so I would also like to know what your success and failure stories, especially your success stories. Uh, if there's games that work on this that we haven't mentioned, I would love to know about it. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, I hope this answers a lot of your questions. I'm, I'm going to um, drop this on YouTube and see if that helps everybody who's gotten stuck. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.